is going on guys it is a fine fine super fine day here in southwest pa it's funny because it's actually pretty windy um and 603 vibes literally just uploaded a video today and he said something about it being windy and stuff and this is um this is not like a response to that video it's just really ironic that it's um it, it's pretty windy so i kind of want to go over like a little bit of like riding techniques or things that i do um as far as like mitigating like the wind because the 650 is a light bike and there's a lot of surface area that can get blown around um so i'm going to try and go to areas that are more windy like open bridges uh farmland that i know has some deep valleys and the interstate uh, so those are usually really windy areas, so I want to get like the most out of the wind But uh, whenever I find something interesting, I'll come on and we'll start talking. All right guys All right guys you recognize this it's my favorite turn. I love this turn. I don't know why it's not go too too crazy because tires might be a little cold you know, a little close to that corner there. Alright. Now, I'm hoping that as we're getting into here, the wind is going to be a lot more intense. And then I'm going to go on the interstate where usually is always a lot more intense. Um, but I guess as far as like, you know, how to ride and how to deal with high winds, the, 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 the best thing you can really do real quick is to um, kind of know when these winds are going to happen and just kind of follow your your weather forecast. Whoa, yeah, see like that. See, I don't know if you can hear it whenever it hits you, but it's uh, kind of blowing back and forth, but really on this uh, right-hand side, like I was thinking, and uh, it, it really starts knocking the bike. But the best thing you can do, obviously, is really forecast the wind and know that it's, it's going to be an issue. This is obviously a springtime situation, so we know that this happens all the time. But as far as like actually dealing with it, uh, the best thing to do is to kind of always expect it, like, and to, to kind of expect it in places where you know it's going to be like right here, look, we got trees blocking it. If it's hitting me on this side, there's obviously a barrier right there. But what's going to happen once I get through this turn, I can kind of expect that it's going to be coming. So whether it will or won't, I don't know, but we're kind of expecting it. And with that expectation, it's important for me, I think, to kind of tighten up your body position on the bike and not necessarily like lock like like death squeeze the handlebars because you obviously never want to do that but maybe hold a little bit tighter to the bike with your feet right so your feet are on the pegs i need to be in a lower gear and these people need to be wearing gear i passed like six people nobody wearing gear they can do what they want i don't care but you, your your feet are is like is like the first point of contact so really get good foot that get really good feet position footing position and uh be on the balls of your toes and use the rest of your feet to anchor your bottom weight right because that's going to be where it starts and then the next thing is obviously going to be your legs and with the legs i also kind of hold a little bit tighter of a grip whenever we're in really windy situations and it's not like a it's not like a holding on for dear life it's more or less like it's not windy right here but you see the clock the flag blowing right there as soon as i get here got hit with a little bit of wind so it, it's always kind of expecting it and embracing yourself you're kind of always in the state of embrace is what i'm really trying to get at because you don't know when it's going to hit you on the side. These are gusting winds, right? It's going to hit you broadside very randomly or seems like randomly. And, you know, to, there's also different kinds of wind storms, wind situations. Like sometimes it's all just hitting one direction. And then other times 
it's hitting you hard this way continuously blowing hitting you pushing you pushing you pushing you and then it whips around and hits you on the other side and then while you're fighting this way it stops and hurries up and hits you on this side and then since you're tense up on this side you squeeze over a little bit more so it can kind of catch it by surprise lower gear that's where i need to be in my life um but it's that kind of always preparing for and having a little bit tighter of a grip on the handlebars still with your elbows bent and downwards i mean it doesn't actually have to be yeah see right now this is strong strong head when you can see the the which i'm calling it's hit me really hard on this side so while it's hitting me on this side i can kind of bend and lean into it maybe stick my elbow out in that direction my leg also out in that direction to minimize that surface area whether it's going to make a huge difference probably not but sometimes it can give you a little bit more feel of uh, stability because while this leg is out no i'm going straight while this leg is out my other leg is pushed up against the gas tank so it's holding me in this position while i'm getting blown in this position while minimizing my surface area in this position it's it, it might sound like a lot and i'm hoping i'm not making it sound more than what it is because it's there's it's really nothing to it this is just me trying to explain that but the biggest thing that i think is definitely keeping your feet in the right position on the balls of your feet tucked into the the side of your bike squeezing your legs to your tank maybe having a little bit extra grip but still very loose i don't know if you can see my elbow in the mirror very loose in the elbows what you can also do is minimize your surface area because that's what's getting hit so a very easy way to do that is to just tuck into the motorcycle itself again your elbows are bent they're they're still loose but you have see i got hit broadside on the side but you uh your uh your elbows are still loose but you still have control of the bike now you're still going to get blown around it's it's not to say that you're not going to get blown around it's just more or less like really i'm gonna hit on the other side now it's, it's just really trying to get your body into the lowest center of gravity we're trying to really center in on those physics and that center of gravity um did i go the wrong way no i did not go the wrong way this is a very pretty road too by the way down that way this is a nice road too but that's that's like a big thing so again for me right now it seems like the wind is blowing towards me that's not big of a deal we can look at the flag ahead to kind of get a picture of what's coming so it's coming on my left hand or coming on my right hand side moving to the left so maybe that's something i can kind of prepare my body for the other thing that really gets blown around is your head my turn signal was on is your head and this isn't that bad of wind right now right now I'm, I'm starting to get those weird shaky things that i was telling you about but that's not too bad but sometimes when that wind is gusting like 25 knots 30 knots your head really starts to to swivel around and i don't know if you've ever watched uh, canyon chasers or his video about um a he used the bowling ball on the stick uh, a few times but if you remember that situation uh whenever your head's getting blown say it's getting blown this way now i'm switching off the uh i'm switching off my center of gravity and the bike might want to go a little bit more in that direction while i'm getting blown in that direction all around trying to put more pressure and weight on this side of the bike so that doesn't happen please just be water yes it is water norman norman's never out he's tucked in somewhere i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to get off of here uh actually you know what maybe i'll i'll ride through the uh the sleepy hollow looking thing and then i'm going to jump off and whenever i come back i want to be on the interstate and i'm hoping the wind gets a little bit more crazy I love riding in the crazy winds. I like riding in the rain. I want to make a video very shortly about 
riding in the rain and why you should do it and nobody is in here <gasps> nobody all oh, spooky sleepy hollow we hear my engine see how like badass that sound that stock what that stock game do apparently nothing apparently nothing okay Ooh, i'll be back all right guys we're back i'm hoping that i'm hoping that it'll be a, a lot more windy up here on the interstate or oh and yeah wow that's yeah that's noticeably different i'm not even on it yet all right this will be fun um so i guess i already kind of explained everything so if you want to go ahead and stop watching uh because of just the information then there you go this next part here i'm going to see how windy it can get and talk about what i'm experiencing and what to do oh no i'm gonna drop my bike you believe that can you believe that maybe i should get some no don't get burger king it does not like you even though you like it got a serious love hate relationship all right so we're getting on doing our safety checks oh we're good to go let's go what's up guy noticeably windy off off the bat it's uh it's a strong strong headwind so again because it's it's always windier on the interstate anyways that extra wind especially whenever it's kind of coming at me at this angle if that makes any sense it's not straight it's not perpendicular but it's like right here like 20 30 degrees and that's kind of making the bike want to like jerk around so for this situation in particular i would definitely tuck down in i'm tucking down into the bike i'm trying to minimize as much surface area so the front of me is tucked down and hopefully the aerodynamics of the windscreen and all that stuff is doing an adequate job of just getting that wind over me now it's kind of hitting my right shoulder which is also kind of pushing whoa yeah ah uh, damn that's crazy yeah it's it's really really pushing so whenever it's pushing on my shoulder it's kind of wanting to make the bike go that way because ugh, because in order to turn you push to go left or you pull to go left but on the opposite side if that makes sense you know what i'm trying to say right you want to go left you push left or you pull right so that's kind of what's going on over this bridge a lot more a lot more wind it's uh it's that very choppy gusty wind and uh it's uh it's pretty intense i'm not going to lie it's really trying to blow my head back and that alone will make you really tired when you're trying to keep your neck straight and it's just strenuous and strenuous Ugh, i want to make sure that was recording the next big thing is what do you do about heavy wind and semis because those bastards put off a lot of turbulence and it's never right behind it's right here right here i'm feeling that crazy i'm not moving my head like that that's the turbulence with the wind plus the turbulence of the truck it's always about six or seven car lengths back so obviously the best thing to do with that is either stay further behind it that hit me hard or try and get around it i'm just chilling i'm doing 62 i'm just chilling but the wind is very noticeably intense like it's really starting to blow me down it's not in the sense that it's unsafe but it's definitely something that will scare you if you are not practicing it like and oh and that's what's crazy because like it's like it's like a steady 15 mile an hour uh, wind speed with like a 30 mile an hour gust and then nothing and then another 30 mile an hour gust and then it dies down to 15 like it's all over the place and it's it's those things that are difficult because obviously how your body position is going to change from 30 to 15 whether you're getting hit on the side and you're putting more weight on the uh, side that's getting hit or the side that's not getting hit rather to try and bounce everything out it drops down and now you still have all that weight so now the bike is going right so it's it's a lot of really fast adaptations here's a bridge is it's going to get noticeably windy uh not so bad 
It actually died down for a second. Is it going to get busier? Or windier? Yeah, right here. So, yeah, it's just a lot of trial and error, if I'm being completely honest. Like, the best thing to do, again, like I said, is just kind of tuck down in. Make sure your feet are in the right position. They're hugging the, they're hugging the bike. And uh, your legs are hugging the bike. Your elbows are nice and loose. But you're kind of firm, a little bit extra firm on the handlebars. But you're not, you're not too tight because you gotta quickly adjust between those those wind speeds and those those gusts of wind. And yeah, the best thing to do, honestly, is just just practice it. If this is something that you're you're into and you want to deal with, I mean, I think it's fun. I think it makes it uh, more fun. It's definitely more sketchy, but. I, I think that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna get off this exit. I don't need to stay on here This was just for uh, a Demonstration these are other weird areas where you can run into situations where like it's a it's a sharp turn and the winds blowing you down further into that turn like it can get um I think it's pretty fun pretty quick, but I hope that this was somewhat educational to you I hope, oh damn it, there's that Burger King right there too. You, you, you bastard. Temptations. Uh, I hope that this was educational and this did help you out a little bit. Um, it's nothing to be worried about, but it is something to definitely understand. You know, it's, it's, it can be sketchy. It, it, it can be sketchy and it can be scary. Like, I, I don't want to say that it's not and, you know, not to fear it. But I'm just saying, keep it in first. I'm just saying, you know, it's uh, it's it's definitely something that you can run into, and I don't know. I think it's fun. It's not even blowing any wind now, but it was sure as hell blowing on the interstate. But anyways, I'm gonna let you guys go. Thank you so much for like, sharing, and subscribing. Last chance to go to Burger King? No, absolutely not, Matt. And uh. I will see you guys in the next one as soon as this turns green because you got to keep it in first. It's green. It's green. All right, guys. Oh, my turn signal was even on. Ah, whatever. We're not going to Burger King. What is going on, guys? I just wanted to do a quick um, add-on to this video. But first, I wanted to say... Um, that there is a, a blessing of the bikes in Murraysville. Uh, I will link in the description more information about it. It looks like it will be at this address after their service, their 1230 service. I will be there if I go um, at noon, around noon, in the, that parking lot uh, where Shop and Save is at. There's a bank there. I can't remember the name of the bank, but it's like a maroon bank or whatever. But I'll be parked in that um, part of the uh, part of the parking lot at where Shop and Save is at, right off of uh, the main road there. Uh, probably around noon, if I go. Uh, like I said, I've been um, I've been sick, and my allergies are absolutely insane. So I don't want to promise that I'm going to go, but I don't want to say that I don't want to go. So uh, if you are interested, shoot me a message instagram or whatever and uh i'll try and get a little bit more information and i'll link uh information in the uh in the description about that too so uh yeah it, it's going to be crazy though. there's going to be a lot of bikes like it's going to be insane and uh that's one of the reasons why i'm kind of weary about it i've also never done it before so if you do go to this and you, you have done this, you know, I like to meet up because I don't know what's going on. I don't know where to go. I don't know anything about it. Maybe we can do a group ride afterwards depending on how everybody feels or whatever. But what I wanted to do real quick is I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, forecasting as far as wind goes because some people might care about that. I'm not going to go super in depth, but if this is something that you would like super in depth about, please let me know. I will be more than happy to do that. I will link in the description this website. This is COD Meteorology. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts here, but basically, as far as forecasting wind, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, these lines here are called isobars, 
And the idea is the closer the lines are, the faster the wind speeds. So right here in this uh, northwest corridor of Colorado, Utah area, you have uh, you have this tight, tight isobars. That means that there's going to be more wind in this area. <laughs> and um, there'll be more wind in that area. And it, where I'm at, somewhere over here in southwest PA, see how far spaced these isobars are? There's not a lot of wind. Uh, so if we move through this forecast, we can see right over here in the Indiana, Midwest Plains, Ohio Valley, we are starting to get a little bit of uh, faster wind. So this is a high pressure. So we're going to be coming down through the Ohio corridor as this uh, cold front pushes through. And uh, that's uh, that's uh, pretty much what, what we're seeing is this. Now, this is an 850 millibar. 950 a thousand is technically your surface area but this is like i don't know close enough for right now it, it's just a very boring uh weather pattern that we see so i mean like if, if we even go into high resolution that's raw we don't want that we want to see a little bit of information uh where was have u.s fronts okay so in this area again as we see in the colorado area we have these tight isobars so right in here is going to be a little bit more windy still not crazy um we got you know 10 knots 15 knots it's what these little flags are saying it's showing you what direction and depending on how many lines uh they have is is pretty much how how fast those winds are uh and then in in this general area, my general area, you can see it's it's five knots here, maybe uh, whoopsies, uh, five knots here, uh, ten knots here. There's, there's it's not it's not moving fast, right? Because these isobars again are spaced further apart, and in this area here, uh, there's more gusty winds just because of how close the isobars are. I wish that this was an interesting forecast because like whenever you really see these. Uh, low pressure systems swing down they um they bring a lot of wind like this kind of looks a little wonky to me uh it, it really doesn't make sense with like how a low pressure is going to go right the wind's going to come this way so usually on this corridor we would see faster winds as that trough is moving through the area but as far as like this area it, that doesn't really make a lot of sense so this could obviously be uh uh uh, error in the uh, in the forecast modeling or or whatever like that you want to call that these are just dew points of all of that so i don't know uh it, it, again it's just a, it's a very boring forecast there's not much going on but the general idea that i want to say if you want to like a, a very quick reference and you want to kind of play around with these and see what happens that's what we're looking at right we're just looking at these isobars how close they are how further <coughs> How close they are, faster the winds, the further apart, not as fast winds. If this is something, again, you'd be interested in seeing more in depth of, let me know. I would love to nerd out on some weather information for you guys. It's fun. It's not that bad. Uh, I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to chill and watch Moto Vlogs, and I will see you guys in the next one. And again, uh, as far as the um, the blessing of the bikes, I, I am going to make a very solid attempt. I don't want to say indefinitely I am going or indefinitely I'm not going. It really just depends on how I feel. I got my antibiotics, so I'm on the first day of antibiotics. Today is the 19th. It's a Friday. It's a Sunday, so I got a couple days. But anyways, I will see you guys later, and thank you so much for watching. Let me shut this off, and I'll see you later.